Welcome to the Gems of Motherhood. I'm your host, Sharon Khan. I'm here to connect you with some amazing gems of mothers from all walks of life. Each week, you'll hear interviews as well as resources and actionable tips that you can implement in your daily life to be the best gem God has called you to be. Thanks for walking this journey with me today. And don't forget to subscribe to the show. Now let's get into episode 16 with Chris Lupo. You know, every season I embraced Mm -hmm. and I never feared the teenage years or I never said, oh, I'm going to, you know, wish she was a baby. You know, every season can be enjoyable Mm. that your child's in and don't look ahead and don't look back. You know, don't be anxious for the future is what the Bible says. Mm. You know, take each day for its own. And I never went forward and thought, oh, she she's going to have terrible twos. And, oh, you know, she's going to be, you know, it's going <laughs> to be scary to have a teenager. You know, I really enjoyed her teenage years. Right. So today we have Chris Lupo and she is going to talk to us about being a working mom. Chris is a good friend if we've known each other for several years now and she's a highly accomplished and seasoned TV producer, TV host and production manager with over 20 years of experience in television. She's also an ordained minister, life and dream coach, mentor and speaker. Welcome Chris, it's so good to have you on the show today. Hi, Sharon. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Now, Chris, being a mom and being a working mom is absolutely not easy. Now, you were a single mother for a while. Tell me, what was it like raising your daughter while having to work at the same time? You know, a lot of uh, parents today, whether they're single or married, uh, find themselves either needing to work um, or choosing to work. And it can present certain challenges that you wouldn't normally have if you were like a stay-at-home mom. So some of the biggest challenges I found initially when you're a mom is the guilt factor. Mm -hmm. You really sometimes feel guilty leaving your child. Am I doing the right thing? I should really be there for them. And, um, And then sometimes you will overcompensate because you feel the guilt. So Mm -hmm. now, you know, when you're spending time with them, you may be trying to overcompensate. And it was really just getting to a point where you come to peace with that. Like, in my case, I needed to work because I needed, you know, to support myself and my daughter. But my daughter is choosing to work. You know, she could be a stay-at-home mom, but she still finds her work very fulfilling and she finds motherhood very fulfilling. And and she feels that it makes her a better person to keep her uh, mind and uh, busy busyness with work. But like, she's not overworking. You know, she's not right. working like 10 hour days, 12 hour days. So she, and she works from home. So she still gets that mommy time because she can take a break and see her daughter. And I think that was one of the important things to me was as a working mom to really stay engaged with my child mm-hmm. and try to keep that balance. And some of the things I did, you know, everybody knows that we make a lot of sacrifices being a parent, but True. I, you know, because I worked full time, I had to be more creative in how I could be involved with her. So for instance, when she did activities, I, I tried to be like the house mom or, you know, the school parent. Um, even when I worked close enough to the school, I would always go for the, the cupcake parties and, you know, use my lunch hour, take a little extended lunch hour. And just to have those special times of being engaged and it helped me to meet other parents. And um, I think she really, I know she really enjoyed it. She was in competitive cheerleading for years. I went to her games. Mm-hmm. I and, and then I became a leader like at church when she was involved in the young girls club. I became a leader. So that way I was doing um, some of these activities with her. You know, I even went oh, on you know, the camping trips and stuff. Yeah. So it's like, I think every parent, you know, if you, I only had one child. So if you have three children or four, it could be more difficult to kind of be in that involved with each one, but I think you can find special moment to engage with, with each child. Now, I know you mentioned about overcompensating. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? How, you know, how do we sometimes overcompensate? I think when we're really operating out of guilt instead of just out of love and 
not freeing ourselves and forgiving ourselves or Mm -hmm. being kinder to ourselves and and giving ourselves affirmations that we are a good parent. You know, we buy them things maybe they shouldn't have. We allow them, you know, we we don't stick to boundaries. Mm -hmm. You know, we may, uh, you know, do things that not that's not going to harm them necessarily, but just doing things more out of guilt, like letting them stay up way later than they should or uh, going out with their friends when you really didn't want them to, things like that, that, mm-hmm. um, you know, a lot of people would, especially if they have the money, really buy a lot of things for their children. And I really found that in my case, because I didn't have lots of finances, I had to teach my child to believe God for, mm. for things. And, and I never wanted to say we can't afford this. Mm-hmm. And I would tell her, we have to believe God for this so we can pray for the Lord. And we saw so many miracles happen in her life like that. Like one year she got, she wanted a trampoline for Christmas. And, you know, I had gotten her, I always had nice Christmases for her, but like the trampoline was like $300 and that just wasn't in my budget. And I said, well, we can pray about it. And literally on Christmas Eve that year, someone gifted me a trampoline for her. Mm, and, wow, you know, that's amazing. it goes on and on. Like I have stories like that. She wanted a canopy bed, you know, same thing. We ended up getting a canopy bed just over the years because, and actually I, I remember learning that from Kenneth Copeland because he taught his children that like they had a picture of a boat on their refrigerator when they didn't have at the time the money for that. And they just kept believing God for that boat. And eventually they got a boat. So I, because I didn't want my daughter to be raised in a poverty mentality or a a mentality of lack. Mm -hmm. So I think when you're going through, and it's another way that you can engage with your child to make that a fun thing too. And also it encourages their own personal faith in God. Mm, I love that you were teaching your child to pray for that specific thing. And it's amazing when you see how God works and providing that miracle. Now, being a working mom at that time and just not having, you know, sufficiency, but just completely relying on God for certain things. How did it affect you while you were raising your daughter? Well, believe me, there's a lot of tears. I think all parents have moments of tears because Mm. you wonder, are you doing the right thing all the time? You know, and I was so fortunate that I had just an amazing church. I had amazing, um, my daughter went to Christian private school and there were amazing families in the schools that I became friends with with. And they kind of became our extended family and just helped us. They helped babysit and at times for me, or would pick her up for and bring her to cheerleading and all those little ways that really, really was so helpful to me. Mm -hmm. And um, it helps take that pressure off because you could really be overwhelmed. And I, I really learned to be very frugal and really how to, you know, pretty much live a good life with not as much. And I remember one time, even a friend of mine said, with a lot of money comes a lot of problems. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know she, Very was, true. Uh, she was married to a doctor and they had, you know, they had a lot of, you know, but they still had bills. So you could live beyond your means, no matter what level of income you're bringing in. Right. And I feel that really causes stress for families to, to do that. And so I also taught her to pray scriptures and um, we would put a list of prayers that Mm -hmm. we would do every night and a list of scriptures. And one of them was uh, the Daniel prayer to be 10 times better than all the rest. My daughter was also a cheerleader and she was in competition cheer and really loved it. And I felt that that was just something that really gave her a lot of joy and and discipline. And uh, so I had to um, really support that and try to make that work. But anybody who knows, uh, has her children in sports in general, there's a lot of expenses attached to that. Mm -hmm. And so that was always a challenge too, for me to really uh, believe God for her to continue to be able to do that along with her being in Christian school. Mm. And um, for many years, I drove around a really old car because I really wanted her in Christian school. And I could have bought a new car, you know, had a car payment, of course, if, if I hadn't done that, but it was so worth the sacrifice because Christian school, I'm a big proponent. It was very 
supportive because they were reaffirming my beliefs Mm -hmm. and they were training her uh, in in the way that I would have if I could have been there full time for her. And they were uh, teaching her and, and the other families had the same values. So it was so important for me for her to grow up in that kind of nurturing environment that nurtured not only her mind, but her spirit. Mm. And, um, it, that to me was probably the biggest sacrifice I had financially and it was well worth it. And, um, even at one point when she went into seven and and I also worked at the school to help pay for that initially for the first few years when Mm I, um, was able to do that. And so there are ways that we can be creative and make things happen for our children that, Sometimes we just have to think outside the box and pray and ask God to provide and see how you can make that work. Mm-hmm. But it was, it, to me, it was definitely worth it. Um, she had really great friends. I mean, you know, no school is perfect. No children are perfect, whatever school they go to. But at least you had, uh, for the most part, parents who had the same value system and, you know, were supportive in the boundaries and the things that you wanted to permit your child to do, especially as they get older. And that was another thing as a parent that I, I learned to just, I mean, I loved the baby stage, you know, Mm -hmm. I just loved her, you know, nine months was really my favorite time, but you know, every season I embraced Mm -hmm. and I never feared the teenage years or I never said, Oh, I'm going to, you know, wish she was a baby, you know, every season, can be enjoyable Mm. that your child's in and don't look ahead and don't look back. You know, don't be anxious for the future is what the Bible says, Mm. you know, take each day for its own. And I never went forward and thought, Oh, she, she's going to have terrible twos. And Oh, you know, she's going to be, you know, it's going (laughs) to be scary to have a teenager. You know, I really enjoyed her teenage years. Right. I love that when you said just embrace, embracing the season um, and the age bracket they're in. Today, there was a little bit of challenge over in the Santiago household. So I just have to embrace <laughs> that <laughs> moment. <laughs> but as you were talking, it, it just made known to me that you made a lot of sacrifice as a mom. And just being a single mom, working through it for your daughter. How hard was that for you? Well, you know, there were times when I'd be really frustrated and, um, you know, I wish I'd had more of a life for myself. As a single parent, it's sometimes it makes it a little challenging to date. Mm-hmm. You know, you you really want to be uh, very protective of your children. Of course. And you, you don't want to be... I didn't want to uh, introduce them to different men until Mm -hmm. it was maybe someone that I would be serious about. And, uh, you know, and then sometimes those men have children and, you know, there's other dynamics involved. So I was really cautious and protective uh, with my dating life around her. And, but at the same time, as a single parent, it's interesting when you do date because if you don't have children and you're dating someone, you never really know what they're going to be like as a parent. Mm. Once you get married, then you find out, oh, their parenting style right. is like this, you know? Yeah, very but, different. <laughs> right? And then you have to start to like work it out. But I felt very exposed because people could see me as a parent already, if if that makes sense. So, um, but as you know, God had it, I didn't really end up getting married till after she was fully grown. Uh, Not that I really thought I would have married sooner, but that's all good and okay. But it is, um, you know, sometimes it's lonely. I did have good friends, but you can't be with your friends all the time, like a single person can, because you're, you know, with your child and going to cheerleading games or Mm -hmm. basketball games. And, uh, but I learned to, um, you know, make friends where we were at Mm -hmm. and that kind of filled in those gaps for me. I had a lot of good people around me that would pray for me too. And, uh, you know, it, it, it helped on that end. I'm very thankful. My daughter is amazing. Um, 
you know, she really is just a good person. And I'm so fortunate that, um, you know, she loves me so much. And right. now she's a mom and it's really fun to see her be a mom. And, <laughs> and, you know, she's just like, she has tears of joy every day. And it's hilarious because every night she goes through the pictures of the day. I mean, she was <laughs> with her child and she's still going through her pictures and videos. So, you know what? That's what I do too. And I'm like, what? Well, haven't I had enough? I thought I needed a break. And yet I'm still staring at her pictures and her videos. And then I know I'm going to be woken up in a few hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <You know? laughs> exactly. I know you mentioned earlier that you, know, you sent your daughter to a Christian school. Now, mm -hmm. having been able to work so much um, in order to raise your daughter, how did you find the time and how did you raise your daughter up in faith? Well, a lot of what I did in far as far as like just encouraging her faith was praying over different things mm -hmm. and um as a uh, that daniel prayer i used to pray that over her all the time that you'd be 10 times smarter 10 times better and i remember when she first started cheerleading and tumbling the coaches kept saying she is learning this so fast she is mm -hmm. just amazing and i knew exactly why she was learning it so fast because mm -hmm. we were praying the daniel prayer and we saw different scriptures just come to life in our lives. One time we wanted, um, after she had gotten that canopy bed, she wanted a house. And I'm like, I said to her, I go, uh, we can't get a house. I go, we don't even have a lawnmower. And the funniest thing that night, she prayed when we prayed together. Well, we prayed together every night too. Mm -hmm. And when we prayed together that night, she prayed that God would bring us a lawnmower. And what was so special about that prayer, I believe it was like about probably well, the, uh, the part we were staying in a condo, renting a condo, and that owner sold the condo. So we had to move. And so it was probably only like a year and a half or two years later that we bought, I bought my first house and my employees pulled some money. And what was the gift they bought me for the house? <laughs> a lawnmower. <laughs> That's amazing. So I God is like, so good. Know, right. It's childlike faith. I mean, yeah. and so I think all the, you know, we just had so many of these stories over the years. I, I actually wish I kept like more of a diary of it because we just kept seeing the Lord provide over and over and over and over again. And, um, and it was, you know, it makes it exciting and it, it helps children as they grow mm -hmm. even to engage in that relationship with God as their father, God as their provider. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even if they don't need uh, maybe something financially, just so that they have that relationship with the Lord. And I was always very um, hands on with really wanting to train her up in the way she should go because I didn't want her to end up in, you know, on drugs or going down a, a bad path. So I was mm -hmm. always working on her identity and really trying to keep open communication with her and talk openly about issues. And, you know, as they get older, it's really funny too, because sometimes they're like, you know, like she would, her friends used to think I was really funny and she'd be like, don't laugh at her, you know, because she knew it would just make me want to do more funny stuff. And, uh, you know, they just go through the, but, you know, even to this day, her, or some of her friends are, are still friends with me and they call me mama Prash, and, and, you know, that's a, a really nice thing to know that, um, I not only was able to love her and enjoy her, even though, yes, it was stressful. Was I tired? Constantly. I used mm. to go to bed before her. I literally <laughs> would go to fall asleep. I mean, the house could have burnt down. I was out. Like, <laughs> you know, and she's still up. And I was like, you know, she'd be in her room, but I was like, I, I'm just so tired. Yeah, it was very, it's long days. Yeah. And I think even when you're not a working mom, it still could be, it's long days. Those children get up early and they go, you know, and then right. even, even if, you know, like my daughter has her uh, child going to bed, getting up at eight and going to bed at eight. But that's mm -hmm. 12 hours. I know. Not yep. <laughs> that's my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like thinking, how do you get all this energy? Oh, because I got all that sleep and mommy didn't get no sleep. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it, you know, it, you are tired a lot. 
and um you know you just press through i remember one time when i was hosting a show in tulsa oklahoma and it was the wife of the governor and she was an educator and she was a beautiful woman and she said something <laughs> she said my only regret is that i didn't clean the house less and spend more time with mm. my children that really stuck with me because as a parent, we could get so task oriented. Oh, I have to make breakfast. I have to make lunch. I have to clean up. I have to do laundry. I have to do all of this housework and my other job <laughs> and take care of them and take care of my husband. And, and, you know, it could be overwhelming mm -hmm. with the tasks. Mm -hmm. And that really freed me to say, okay, today, it's, you know, there's dishes in the sink. I'll do them tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was like, it, it helped release me from that perfection mm. of wanting to be that perfect mom and doing everything right because, you know, none of us are perfect moms. And that was the other thing that really helped me, but too, was talking to other moms and realizing, oh, what, what my child's going through, your child's going through. So that's normal, you know? <laughs> and because um, sometimes you think you're the only one whose child is like, doing something or you're doing something wrong and you're really not. And so all those affirmations to ourselves are so helpful. And, and it, and it's like self care because if right. we take care of ourselves, we can be better parents. Amen. That's what I've been hearing a lot, self-care. And I love that reminder that we don't have to do it all because we can't do it all. I know that I know that at times I'm like, I'm not gonna clean. I don't care. <laughs> and I feel like a bad mom or a bad wife, you know. But some things can be placed at a later time just so that you can put other things in priority. I thank you for just saying that. So this leads me to my next question. What are some actionable tips which you suggest for moms who are working and trying to do it all? Well, I think taking time out for yourself, even if it's one hour a week, self-care, like get your get a manicure done, somehow put it in your budget, find someone to watch the kids or do it while they're at school. Also, just really even researching. I mean, we have so much information available to us right now that having that knowledge really gives you more peace in how to handle your life situations, how to handle your children, how to handle your family and, and help preserve yourself. I think that another important thing is to stay connected to community, be involved in your church, develop friendships. Even if you don't need a lot of friendships, if you have a few good families that you can be around and other children, it's like, you know, the saying that it takes a tribe to raise a child. Mm -hmm. It really does. And having your tribe be like-minded uh, like and supportive in that way, uh, people of prayer, people who know the word of God, people who, ha you know, have joy in their life, that's going to bring your family more joy, your child more joy, having them surrounded by other children who, you know, know how to forgive and love and, and play nicely. It, it's, it's really makes a difference. Yes. And then if you really need something, those people can be there for you and you can be there for them too. Mm. That's so true. Well, we're about to get to the end of the show, but is there anything else you would like to share with other Gems of Mothers out there? I just want to encourage all the moms out there. It's the most important job in the world, and God gave you these treasures. And I love that you named it Gems of Mom because your children are the treasures. Mm -hmm. and, and just see them as that. Just remind yourself that, you know, you'll get through this today. You know, if you have a bad day, if, the, if your child's not behaving right, you're not behaving right. Mm -hmm. Know that you're going to get through it. Know that God's grace is new every day. He Amen. loves you. He loves your family. These are a blessing from the Lord. And um, let that encourage you and, and just help you through those difficult days and, and, and just really try to laugh more um, and experience joy with your family too. Amen. Thank you so much, Chris, for coming on to the show. I really appreciate you being here. 
Oh, thank you so much for having me. And I just want to, can I say a little prayer for the mom? Absolutely. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, that we've had this time together. I just pray for each and every mom that this podcast is reaching. I just pray, Lord, that you would just encourage them, love on them, and um, just be their Heavenly Father and let them know how much you love them. You're their provider. You're their biggest cheerleader, Lord. And just uh, be with these moms today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Chris, for that prayer. I'm sure it was a blessing to a lot of moms out there. Thank you, Sharon. Osborne Books and More offers educational and award-winning books that help you cultivate meaningful connections with your children. Head to literacyculture.com to explore your book selection or to contact Rosetta Byers for a list of hand-picked recommendations for your family. Every purchase made through September 30th will be matched by 50% to donate books to the women and children at Hosanna Home in Opelika, Alabama. Founded in 1996 by Rick and Kim Higgins, Hosanna Home is a place of restoration for women who are suffering from life-controlling issues. By choosing books for your family, you are also giving these mothers and children the gift of reading together. Now, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Gems of Motherhood podcast. If you're wanting to connect with more amazing Gems of Mothers and more resources, head over to gemsofmotherhood.com where you can subscribe to the show. That's where you'll find show notes with actionable tips and any links mentioned by our guest. Most importantly, I hope you'll find inspiration and learn to cultivate your own journey. You are loved. You're an incredible gem to God. He knows you intimately. He knows what you're going through and he knows what you need. Remember, you're fearfully and wonderfully made in Him. Be sure to tune in next week for our next episode.